Well, first and foremost, we're all about data security. That's really what we do full time. However, as you know, data security is a very, very broad topic, a very broad market. So if I had to think about kind of the vertical space that we're in is we're all about protecting consumer information as they relay that to companies, typically through contact centers or through the enterprise with telephone calls or omni-channel. So I'm sure you've had transactions where you might read your credit card number uh, over the phone to a contact center agent. Uh, or you may uh, enter your bank account information uh, while you're chatting with an agent uh, or someone at a company. So we're all about taking that data uh, and securing that so that you can reach standard compliance uh, or whether you can meet uh, various um, legislative uh, laws that are in place regarding privacy and security. we're all about security. So we believe we're the industry leader in making sure that we can protect that data. We make sure that that data is never stored at our customer sites, at our sites. And we like to say that if you don't store it, then it can't be breached. Um, secondly is, is we differentiate ourselves with what we believe to be a great user experience for the consumer or the customer that's using our system. For example, uh, if you were to call into a contact center and provide your credit card information to make a, a purchase, you certainly would like for that information to be secure, but at the same time, you wanna do that in a very elegant or a very user-friendly experience. Uh, another way we differentiate ourselves is we make sure that not only is that data secure, but the person that you're talking to or chatting with or SMSing with can perform the transaction like a purchase, but they never know your information. So imagine you're talking to a contact center agent and that agent says to complete the transaction, I'm gonna need your credit card number, your expiration date, uh, and your um, CVC code. Uh, now imagine being able to, while you're on that call, use your phone to input that information, but the agent never hears that information even while they're talking to you. So it's the best of all worlds. You have a very pleasant interaction, a great user experience, but at the same time, your credit card information is so secure that even the person you're talking to didn't, uh, wasn't able to discern that information during the transaction. Same thing for chat or for SMS. That's a big differentiator for us uh, in the marketplace. And then lastly, is we've really pioneered the ability to do that across many different channels. So as you know, contact centers and how you have interactions with companies is just not limited to uh, voice or telephone calls. That might now be through chat, chat bots, email, SMS, even video. And so our ability to secure that information across all of those omni channels is really a terrific differentiator for us. Our original founders ran contact centers. In fact, they ran outsourced contact centers. And one of the solutions that they were looking for is how to be PCI compliant and do that in such a way that as they took the credit card information, that they could do that in a very uh, secure way, but yet with a great uh, experience by the customers calling into their contacts. And when they scoured the marketplace and tried to look for an out of the box solution, one just really didn't exist. And so they said, well, if we're having this issue, why aren't other contact centers looking for the same solution? And they found that actually it was quite true they were. So they solved the problem for themselves and ended up with a terrific solution set and then decided to spin that out as a separate company about a decade or so ago. And that's exactly how Semaphone was born.
Well, our first big client deal were the founders' companies to begin with, and and you know, as I said, it's kind of like uh, necessity. Uh, a lot of times is is uh, what bears out innovation, and that that's really the case. Uh, because the uh, compliance uh, standards were very high in the UK, probably higher than any place in the world. Uh, is that in the early stages, we were all about satisfying primarily contact centers in the United Kingdom. Now, since then, uh, we've become much more global. So, of course, North America is a great marketplace for us. You know, Australia is a great marketplace for us. But in those early days, it was all about being able to satisfy with customers all the way from insurance uh, to financial, fintech, uh, to retail, uh, to healthcare, those were all the areas that were primary targets uh, to start with. Uh, and then, of course, that great idea just expanded into protecting more data than just card data, and also uh, being able to handle many more channels other uh, other than just voice. Uh, of course, every, every company uh, that's educating the marketplace uh, has its challenges, but, but I think for us that's very interesting. And even to this day, we spend a lot of time and effort working with the market in just educating them on many things. First of all, what are the industry standards? What are the compliance standards that they need to adhere to? What's the, the legislation? that they need to uh, adhere to. And so we take a lot of pride in working with the industry and working with our customers on helping to uh, educate them. But that, that was an obstacle certainly uh, uh, originally. Even today, I would say in North America, one, one of our biggest challenges is just educating those companies of what they need to comply with, why they need to comply with it. Um, also, you know, contact centers are typically relatively complex animals or, or any other part of companies that take calls. And so uh, attempting to make the solution as simple as possible, as frictionless as possible. And then lastly, as I indicated earlier, we've really been a pioneer in omnichannel because contact centers uh, in particular are expanding very rapidly uh, into uh, channels other than just voice, you know, video, uh, SMS, chat, chatbots, et cetera. And so uh, helping those contact centers move into those new channels, that's been a challenge and at the same time an opportunity. But I think the thing we take a lot of pride in uh, is just how not only do we provide great solutions, but how we also, quite frankly, help educate the industry. One thing about uh, uh, trading securities and, and, and bonds and other types of things is making it accessible and financially um, uh, advantageous to virtually anyone. And so I like the approach that Robinhood has taken into uh, you know, no charge transactions. They've recently announced where you can buy fractions of shares. And I think what they've done is a really good job of making their technology and, and making investing available to many more people because of their uh, business model. And then another company that I like is uh, Brex. Uh, uh, as I said, I, I have been through and really admire startup companies. And Brex is all about how do you make uh, uh, credit cards available to startups. And a lot of times that's a, a real challenge for startup companies. And so how they can provide higher limits, how they can make those available with, uh, with uh, either low or no personal guarantees and how they really cater to that uh, startup and, and promoting um, uh, those companies to do well and, and maybe have access to finances that they may not have had uh, availability to in, in the past. I don't see voice going away. I don't even necessarily see voice shrinking in usage, 
but the rise of the additional channels, uh, very rich channels, and, and even the ability to handle multiple channels at one time. Uh, I, I think there's just such excitement and energy and, and we're gonna see some real inflection points. Uh, data security is just becoming more and more important just on a daily basis. Is We all understand that our data has to be protected. We have to have information that's kept uh, private and more and more companies understand why that's not just important to their business but but critical and and in some cases mandatory to their business so i, I certainly see uh, some big changes there in in the next year or two and then i think uh lastly we're, we're just going to see continuing um compliance standards and legislation uh you know we've seen the california privacy act and and other uh, things popping up just very recently and I think other states or other countries uh, other regions are going to adopt those and then companies are going to be chasing how they remain compliant with those and they're going to see companies like Simophone providing great education great service and, and great products that they're going to need to uh, flourish in the industry that they happen to uh, be in so there's going to be no shortage of excitement and no shortage of uh, changes and we're really looking forward to that.